What should we be on the lookout for in week three of Utah spring football? And how is the defensive side of the ball shaping up to be for the Utes? We're talking about on today's Locked on Utes. You are Locked on Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Speaking of subscribers, we are officially over 2,300 subscribers, so thank you guys so much for continuing to support our show. And as I mentioned, love interacting with you guys in the comments, too. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free you can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college that's all caps no spaces locked on college terms and conditions do apply my name is jt wister still former intern inside the university of utah athletic department excited to be joined by the desert news's ryan mcdonald on today's show and ryan when you're looking at utah football now two weeks into spring ball we're gearing up for week three i think what i'm excited about is the very first week was install last week was the first week of hitting I think for a lot of the younger guys, the early enrollees, and we've already seen Wilson make some wild plays, things of that nature. But I think a lot of guys like, okay, I know the plays. I've gotten smacked around maybe a little bit as freshmen kind of tend to do in their first time going against basically guys who are as big as strong as them, just four with four years more of collegiate experience. Then I feel like we're going to see a lot of these younger guys continuing to step up, right? We've heard already some nice things about a David Washington and other freshmen already mentioned Wilson Garcia continuing to grow in that aspect too. But I really think a lot of the young freshmen, I think this will be their best week of practice yet. And I'm excited to see which of those guys really stands out. Cause even though there weren't a ton of guys in this recruiting class for Utah and a lot of them, whether it's on their mission or that they just won't come up until the summer, we're only getting a small taste of this class as a total. I think there's a lot of players with some really high ceilings. And I think this week is going to be a week where we start to see a lot more of what that ceiling could really look like for these guys. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I think that's what you want in spring ball, you know, (laughs) we don't care. Uh, Well, I mean, injuries aside, we don't care what camera, seeing what camerizing and Brent, you know, the, the, the veterans, you know, I mean, yeah, like I said, with those guys, Specifically, yes, because of the injuries, you want to see what they can do. But generally speaking, in spring ball, you don't particularly care, you know, to see what veterans can do because they've proven themselves in game action for multiple years, you know, what they can do. And and so I, I do think that that leaves time and 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 opportunity for the younger guys to to not only get their feet wet, but like you said, and maybe those first couple of weeks is, is just kind of getting their feet wet, getting the lay of the land. But yeah, then to, to show, Hey, I can maybe be a contributor, you know, this, this season. Um, so I, I think you're exactly right. And I, and I think, um, I think that that is what you see it, it, this might sound negative, but I think sometimes you, you do see some names of, yeah, like take David, you mentioned David Washington, take him just as an example. You might see him stand out, you know, in a in a setting like spring ball, and then maybe he doesn't do anything during the season. So you're like, well, what happened? But I think the point of the further I've gone along with this is I think the point of it is spring ball maybe isn't necessarily an indicator of what young guys might stand out in the season. It, mm-hmm. it could be, yep. but at the, at the very least it's okay. These guys are standing out in a spring ball or a fall camp um, type setting. Um, does that make sense? You know, I, 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 I think, yeah, it gives these guys a chance to, to show what they can do. Maybe even if they're not totally game ready quite yet. 
I think it absolutely makes sense because let's look at last year, right? Brandon Rose was unreal and not unreal. He was very good in spring ball, hence why he was in the competition with Bryson Barnes. Now, the injury took it out of him. I said, but I've said multiple times on the show, I'm not sure he still would have started because Kyle Whittingham is a guy who tends to trust the guy who, number one, takes care of the ball better and the one he's more familiar with. That was Bryson Barnes, of course. But I don't think if Brandon Rose has the spring ball he has last year, like Utah's not being more aggressive in trying to find a backup quarterback. We don't know how aggressive they were, but when all they have is Brandon Rose, and I've said multiple times before, I'm not like ready to be like, oh, Brandon Rose is better to be the best, best backup in the Big 12. Like we haven't seen him in live game action, so there's still questions there. But I feel good about him as a backup quarterback because I saw him do good things in spring ball. I saw him nearly beat out Bryson for the job. And as much as we try to completely rewrite Bryson's time at Utah based on one bad game against Northwestern, not trying to excuse it. Utah still won eight games with him, so obviously he was still pretty decent, and that guy was pretty decent, was in a quarterback battle with a guy in Brandon Rose, so I think you're in a good spot there. But that was our first sign, to your point, spring ball of what was to come. And sometimes with the young guys, that's how it is, but then you get to the older guys, right? The breakout player from spring ball two years ago was Devon Vele. He was Utah's leading receiver later on that season, right? I think there's some transfer guys coming in too, whereas they get more comfortable and all those things. We've already heard a little bit of Keenan Johnson. Uh, Dorian Singer's already been one of the stars of spring ball already, just with the way everyone's raving about him and his abilities too. And there's tons of other guys, Anthony Woods, Carson Ryan, who will get, you know, just we're going to see more from them as just the off season as a, in total continues to kind of wear on. But how about a guy like a Tayshawn Lyons? He kind of fits into the mold of both, right? A young guy, who's only in his second spring ball. I'm not sure if he did it last year with Washington, in fact. But learning the ropes has all the physical talent in the world and an opportunity to really be special, too. So it's not even just the young guys. I think some of these transfers who, when they're more, you're going to see that confidence on the practice field when we go out there. And I think I expect the coaches to start raving about those guys a little bit more, too. We've, they've been asked specifically about them, but I'm excited to see that what other kind of reviews and raves they can earn from Coach Whittingham, who is obviously very selective in who he chooses to give that to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, to your to your point specifically, and and maybe you've talked about you probably have previously, but yeah, um, my guy coworker Joe Coles, follow him Joe A Coles on Twitter or X or whatever we're call, calling it these days. Um, yeah, he he wrote a story last week, I believe, about um Singer and Lions and and just how yeah those guys are like you said yeah that coaches like Ludwig has been asked about them specifically and so forth but um yeah uh, transfers to me are i feel like those when they're standing out in spring ball or fall camp i feel like in a way those might be a little bit more real in terms of how they might translate to the season because you're bringing those guys in theoretically to produce for you yeah. maybe maybe more than you are some of your true freshmen you know some some of your true freshmen maybe you're bringing in to to develop and build you know but but it feels like some of the transfers it's like all right yeah we're bringing you in to produce now and so yeah it is a good sign when those transfers can produce now even in a, a spring ball setting i think definitely encouraging and you know, I'll even say this about the true freshman, right? At this point last year, if you told me Spencer Fano was going to start at left tackle in the fall, I would have said no way. And I don't even think the coaches maybe even felt that way in the fall, in the spring. We don't know that for sure. But then over the course of then fall camp added in, he proved to be the best guy for that position. So it's where it's a nice opportunity for these guys to get their feet wet. And I think of an Isaiah Garcia as a key example of that. Is he going to be able to start another four-star offensive lineman? We'll see how that all plays out. Also continuing to see what we hear about a Caleb Lomu too. So the new face is just continuing to get acclimated with the program, I think is what I'm really excited to see and watch play out here in week three. But one thing we touched on a lot there was the offensive side of the ball. On last Friday's show, I talked about grading every offensive position about how we're feeling at it two weeks into spring ball so far. I want to do that with the defensive side of the ball in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked On Utes, our friends at Nissan's. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. And let's start with a team that a lot of you guys got to see in Salt Lake City this week if you went up to the March Madness games. In the Arizona Wildcats, you can only be described as the Armada. This two seed is a as hardcore as it gets out there. So it's no wonder they took it to Long Beach State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. 
They're a favorite pick by many to make a run and win it all. And of course, they were able to defeat Dayton too. So this week, watching them now advance to Sweet 16, we'll see what that has in store for them. But credit Coach Lloyd and what they were able to do. And also make sure you guys take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. I will also say Nissan's like particular player moment of the week could also have been what Ryland Jones and Sanford and them nearly did in in the or excuse me, the Delta Center. What it, a sight that was to behold too. But make sure you guys head over to Nissan and go check out all their great lineup of vehicles too. I also want to talk to all of you about another sponsor of our episode of Locked On Utes here. It's FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seat, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. March Madness is a wild time, Ryan, whether it's – I'll take my bracket, for example. I picked Duquesne to beat BYU, not because I'm like, oh, I don't like BYU. I actually have – Coach Dan Brott was at Akron for – I mean, since I met him back in 2009, so I've watched him forever, so I wanted him to get a win last year. So I'm like, okay, I got a good feel for this bracket thing. Then fast forward, and then you have Kentucky goes out. I picked Kentucky to win it all in my bracket. So with March, you know, the totality of it is hard to get, but if you do feel good on a particular game, I felt good about Duquesne. I think there's a lot of people who felt good about NC State. That's where you guys have an opportunity to cash in on that gut feeling with FanDuel. So you guys can once again head over to FanDuel today. And it's FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Also, a reminder that the Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show is now available on Locked On College Podcast. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade will break down their brackets and discuss everything you need to know about who's going to win, all the latest happening in the NCAA tournament. So make sure you find the Locked On Back Bracket Breakdown now on Locked On College Basketball Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Ryan, looking at the defensive side of the ball for this Utah football team, it's a group I feel really great about. And, and let's start with the group I feel the best about is the front seven for Utah. For the defense, as I think we've seen like some guys start to get acclimated, right? Like a John Henry Daly is a guy I'm excited to see what he can continue to do to um, Bond, the U- UTEP edge rusher the team added to. Like this defensive line is so good, and they feel poised to have a really good season. The D tackles would probably be an A, like A plus for me with all the guys they have back to Funa, Tanu Vasa, Samote Peppa at full strength, uh, Botu, other guys too, Vaimahi. The defensive ends are like right there. You just when you lose Jonah Ellis, I don't want to be like, oh, this group's an A plus and they lost one of the best pass edge rushers in college football. So for the overall defensive line, they're an A because I love what Van Billinger and Connor O'Toole can do. I still think this is going to be a really good group, and I feel confident in their abilities to do that. But I think it's this is one that probably is going to stay an A unless I get to see Connor O'Toole in some portion of spring camp just or even in fall camp like really tearing everything up out there because as much as coach Witt said he was the team's best pass rusher once again it's just replacing jonah ellis is easier said than done for me i have the defensive line as an a the loss of ellis is the only thing that's holding that back from being an a plus interesting i might go like a minus um okay I'm down <laughs> when I, oh, I like it <laughs> just uh, i think in in large part because of that it's really hard to lose a great great player and that being said utah defensive line basically can just reload every year you know essentially like like you said like i think most programs would have a pretty hard time losing a really good player you know then then that position group might be down for for a year or two you know if if they're losing an, an NFL caliber player, that that position group might be down for a little bit and has to has to rebuild. But I do think Utah on defense, pretty much everywhere, um, but especially on the line, I, I think they can just kind of re- reload at this point. Um, Whittingham, Scally, all those guys have have just built it to where they can just reload um, the the defense. And so, yeah, I think it will be, you know, uh, Sac Lake city is probably a little that, that kind of set the bar, you know? And, and so it'll be interesting to see how elite I think that that front seven can be. I think they can be 
really, really good. But it'll be – I think that's the, the biggest question for me is can they be – yeah, more than more than an A minus, more you know, because A minus pretty darn pretty good. good. A pretty is good. A is pretty good, but yeah. can they be, you know, like one of the best, very best in the country? We'll see. Well, they were stopping the run last year. They were a top five run defense unit, and I think that's the only reason. Like the pass rushes, I think, where we have those light questions, especially like. Utah is going to be able to get pressure against a lot of these teams in the Big 12. But if we want to give them an A+, plus, that's the highest grade that, I mean, the Georgias and Alabamas would have. That's where we, if Jonah Ellis was back, I might feel comfortable doing that because Ellis opposite Connor O'Toole, that's a pretty dangerous thing. But now that Connor's the lead guy, I think he can do it. And I liked what I saw from him, but it's still another animal to keep it up over the whole course of the season. So we'll see how he goes there. Mentioned the front seven, how good they were already. The linebackers. Everyone's back. You have your two starters in Barton and Reed, who are both fantastic. DeMooney did great things when inserted. Even when Lander Barton went down, the linebacking core didn't really miss a beat because of DeMooney's elite level of play. And there's some solid backups there, too. So this is an A-plus for me. I really think this is one of the best linebacker groups in the country. And I think it's one of the biggest reasons that Utah's run defense is so formidable. It's not just that they have the D-tackles capable of taking on the double teams, but they have linebackers who just don't miss tackles. Yeah, Um so we're re- we're recording this on Sunday, um, and yeah. so so yesterday, Saturday, um, the Utah football official Twitter account just like released a list. I think they were trying to get people to follow the players, so they like released a list of the linebackers um, in a, in a tweet in a um, with their handles with all the linebackers yeah. handles. And um, did you hear that in the background? I did you, not. What was it? Oh, all right. Someone was <laughs> le- someone was leaving my house and said bye. <laughs> um, I'll peek inside the curtain. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and so, and and I was looking at that list, and I had pretty much the exact same thought that you just had. Like, that's a pretty loaded group, you know. And and so, yeah, I I would see. I gave the front seven an A minus. Yeah. I'm giving the the linebackers an A. Um, okay. Maybe a plus. What what did you give him? What did you? I gave him an A plus because I look okay. at it like this, right? I don't know. Barton is the one. I'm like, I think he can have NFL success. I think for a collegiate linebacking core, I really think this is about as good as it gets. Like, yes, maybe there's not the 10 out of 10 superstar, but like you can still get an A plus to me. Like maybe it's not a hundred, but it's still a 98 or a 99 to me, which I would still classify as an A plus. Yeah. All right. I'll give him an A plus. We're hey, going. Hey, there we're, we go. There we're we going go. A plus with love the it. linebackers. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's move on to the secondary. Grades are going to fall a little bit here, M- more so just because of who you lost. And as much as we've talked about this a lot on the show, so much confidence in Morgan Scally and Sharif Shaw. But it's like if you still have to put a grade on them, you got to ding them a little bit. For the corners right now, I'm going to go a B plus. I really like what Zamaya Vaughn can do as the top corner on this team. Smith Snowden, think he has a great chance to be great. Haven't seen that much of him. Keenan Johnson, good things at Georgia Tech. Still haven't seen a ton of him, especially going against some of these Big 12 receivers. So there's still some questions. I feel great about the guys in the room. Like, I think this is a good collection of talent, but I haven't seen them. So there's always going to be that question there. I like a guy like a Calhoun, what he can potentially do to you look at some other guys that this Utah team has uh, had waiting in the wings, a CJ Blocker. Maybe he makes a move. So I love the guys in the room. But there's only one who has basically started every game for Utah, not just obviously Vaughn goes even back to a couple years, but even going back to last year. So still some questions there. Trust the coaches. I like the players. I'm going to go B+. plus. We're going just corners only right now? Just corners only when we do safeties in a second. Okay. All right. Yeah. You said B+. plus. I went B+. plus. Where are you going? You went B+. plus. Uh, It might be difficult here. I, I think I might be going more like a B. Just, okay, that's not bad. That's not just, bad. Just, just because, just because of, I mean, of everything you said, you know, mm-hmm. like we, aside from Zamaya Vaughn, we mm-hmm. we don't know about these yeah. guys, and I think I would be um, give even a lower grade if not for Morgan okay. Scally and Sharif Shah. You yeah. know, um, those guys can recruit. Those guys know what they're doing in terms of bringing guys in. Um, And so, yeah, because of, of Morgan Scally and Sharif Shaw, I'm, I'm putting it at a B. It would be even lower without those guys, just because 
great I don't know. You know, it's to me, it's a pretty incomplete group. You know, sometimes people give like incomplete grades. Yeah. I might give that a little bit, but I'll go B. I'll go B. I like it. I think it's fair. So I actually have the safeties as a B. And if you're like, what's the difference between the safeties and the corners? B plus. The plus is basically Zamaya Vaughn. All that experience back, number one corner coming back, been here a while now, played with guys like Clark, like just has done a lot of great things up here. Safeties, I think Nate Ritchie can be really good. I think Jonathan Hall can be really good. I think Gilman can do a lot of great things for this team too. And uh, Teo Johnson moving back there as well. So Teo seems like he's having an unreal spring camp, one of the breakout stars there as well. So, but once like none of these guys over the course of, I guess Richie did back in the COVID shortened season, but like these guys haven't started a 12 game season. None of them have for Utah. Like I said, Gilman was really good at Stanford last year. So because there's still all that newness, I don't think I can go higher than a B for right now. Once again, Morgan Scally, Sharif Shaw, greatly trust the coaching. But I, I'm not going to move them higher than that right now, even though the reviews and everything have been really good in spring ball, until I see it all kind of play out. Like maybe even the spring game, I probably feel a little better about it. Because what we saw with them in Northwestern was good, but it's just still a lot of like unknowns there. So I feel like a B is fair for the talent that's there and the coaching, even if they haven't played a ton together. Yeah. Um, so maybe... Maybe with the the corners, I might go like a high B, you know, like there's like a couple percentage range, you know, for each <laughs> yeah. each grade. Remember the that? Same with A's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for for the corners, I might go like a higher B, and the safeties kind of on the low end of of the B grade. Um, to your point about Teo Johnson, like. It's I'm I'm gonna go on a tiny little rant here. Well, it's uh, it's fascinating to me when guys aren't very highly touted coming out of high school and then just bur kind of burst onto the scene. Uh, I don't think anyone was really talking about Teo Johnson much coming out of high school. You know, he was a guy that they, but I don't think people were you know. There were other guys that people were maybe more excited about than Teo Johnson. And yeah. lo and behold, yeah, I, I've heard he was a, a receiver. That's what I mean. It was crazy. Yeah. He was a receiver yeah. back That's in the day. Right. And then That's now it's a corner. That's right. And so, yeah, and and I've heard the same, that that he's playing really, really well. Again, mm -hmm. my guy, Joe A. Coles on Twitter, co-worker, he wrote a story about Teo Johnson last week. And, and yeah, just how he's he's – Playing really well, I think Jonathan Hall. You mentioned Jonathan Hall. I, he's another one that uh, that I I've got my eye on as as I think he can be good and um, Smith Snowden. Yeah, so uh, I guess yeah. Um, <laughs> I got yeah. Um, so yeah, I I think there again, it's it's talent. I think is there, and we'll see how it all comes together. Just because there's unproven people there. There is a lot unproven. Going to be interesting to watch you play out. Did you give the safeties a grade? Oh, yeah. We'll go B. We'll go. B? We'll go. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. But no, the percentages is not the same as the corners. Like you said, there's that slight percentage different, yeah. right, Ryan? <laughs> yep. 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 But we'll give them both a B. Both a B. I, I think it's a fair place to be. Going to be fun to watch it play out. Only a few weeks away from the spring game. We'll hear from Coach Witt this week. So a lot to still, still talk about with Utah football. But got to talk about the Utah women's basketball team getting a win in the NCAA tournament. We're going to be diving into that in detail in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you about one of the sponsors of our episode of Locked On Utes today. It's our friends at LinkedIn Talent Solutions. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find qualified quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process as easy as it's ever been before. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's all caps, no spaces, locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Also want to talk to all of you about our friends at 
UCCU today, another sponsor of our episode of Locked On News. Here's some exciting news. UCCU has just elevated their checking accounts by enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online than online perfections than ever before. A lot more. Pair with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools. Elevated checking is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle security and financial benefits. The lifestyle benefits alone include cell phone protection, roadside assistance, telehealth with 24-7 access to licensed health professionals with zero copay and exclusive savings on travel, shopping, and dining. And elevated checking is free when you do any one of the following. You can use your debit or credit card 15 times or more a month or make a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more, or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500. Otherwise, UCCU Elevated Checking is only $6 a month. You can visit uccu.com to open an Elevated Checking account online or stop by any branch to open an account. UCCU, love where you bank. Talking to the women's basketball team in one moment. Really quick, though, want to give a shout out to the Utah gymnastics team. They four-peated as Pac-12 champions. Just incredible, the dynasty that the Utah gymnastics program has been able to become, basically. I mean, what Miley O'Keefe and this this core group have accomplished over the years with Utah, unreal to witness. We'll have to dive into it more on a future episode of Locked on Utes, but so amazed at that program's ability to continue to get it done in the in a conferences with staples like Cal and UCLA, good gymnastics programs, too, so all the credit in the world to them. And speaking of credit, we got to give some of the Utah women's basketball team here as they defeated South Dakota St- State, the Jackrabbits, 68 to 54. Ryan, what a weird game this was. Utah jumped out to a 23 lead in the first quarter. So it's like, okay, we're going to blow them out. Nope. Second quarter, South Dakota State responded and goes on a 21 to 7 run. So they were like, oh crap, we're in trouble. But then finally, Utah had that 26 point second, third quarter that really helped them put away. A great performance by Alyssa Peeling at what else is new, right? 26 points, 11 for 20 from the field, uh, made three of the seven threes she shot, seven rebounds, three assists, three steals for her. Just amazing to watch her go to work. How about Jenna Johnson? Nearly a double double, needed one more point, but got the 10 rebounds. It's a big fashion there for you. It's McQueen hitting three threes, scoring 17. So Utah only got four points off their bench. From Deja Young, this is a team that really looks like they're only going to play kind of seven players each game, which I think is okay because White contributed a little bit too. She got 21 minutes, but I think this is a good win for Utah. I'm excited for the opportunity they have against Gonzaga, and always nice to start off the NCAA tourney with a dub. Back-to-back years now that Utah was able to do it too, so you'd love to see that. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, you said it. Um, I'm going to give a shout-out to another one of my coworkers, Brandon L. Judd on Twitter and at the Deseret News. Yeah, he's covering the tournament. Um, yeah, it, it was a weird game. Um, in that twenty-one to seven was was a seventeen zero run, I believe. Um, so you know, not great. Obviously, Utah misses Jana Neepkins. You know, I mean, but that's been the case for most of the season, and really unfortunate there. But um, yeah, we'll see what they can do against Gonzaga on Gonzaga's floor. You know, it's. That's or are you Brenna Maxwell playing for them too? Okay, okay. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I think it would be considered an upset, even though it's a five four, you know, matchup being on Gonzaga's floor. I think it would be considered a, a pretty significant upset if Utah manages to do it. Um, so we shall see. It is, it is interesting. Is it an upset or not like that? Because you're not wrong. Like they're on Gonzaga's floor, but I, I just I feel like the Utah women's team. This and I've seen a little bit of Gonzaga this year, not a ton. I feel like Utah's better, but that's the beauties we get to watch play out. If there's one thing I know, Utah's got Alyssa Peely, so I feel good about that. Uh, can't wait to watch that play out later today. We'll be reacting to that game on tomorrow's show. But he's going to do it for today. Make sure you guys go give Ryan a follow at Ryan W McDonald on. X. Make sure you guys check out all the great content he has going on at the Desert News too. Ryan, thank you for joining us. Thanks as always. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes, but we got so much going on, whether it's the women's basketball team, talking about the men's team too, obviously spring football, gymnastics, everything going on on Locked On Utes. So make sure you guys keep following along all week long.